so we are going to start with the page number 100 two persons could hardly cooperate in anything or meet in any amicable relation without the laws appointing that one of them should be the superior of the other mankind have outgrown the state and all things now tend to substitute as the general principle of human relations a just equality instead of the dominion of the strongest but of all relations that between men and women being the nearest and most intimate and connected with the greatest number of strong emotions was sure to be the last to throw off the old rule and receive the new for the proportion to the strength of a feeling is the tenacity with which it clinched to the form and circumstances with it, with it has even accidentally become associated when a prejudice when a prejudice when a prejudice when a prejudice which has any hold on the feeling finds itself reduced to the unpleasant necessity of assigning reasons it thinks it has done enough when it has reasserted the very point in dispute in phrase which appeal to the pre-existing feeling Thus, many persons think they have sufficiently justified the restrictions on women's field of action when they have said that the pursuit of which women are excluded are unfeminine and that uh, the proper sphere of women is not politics and, or publicity but private and domestic. So proper sphere of women is not politics or publicity but uh, private and domestic life. We deny the right of any portion of the species to decide for another portion or any individual for another individual what is and what is not their proper sphere. The proper sphere for all human beings is the largest and the highest uh, which they are able to attain to. What this is cannot be ascertained. Without complete liberty of choice, the speakers at the convention in America have therefore done wisely and right in refusing to entertain the question of the peculiar aptitudes either of women or men, or limits within this or that occupations may be supposed to be more adapted to the uh, one or to the other. They justly maintain that these questions can only be satisfactorily answered by perfect freedom. Let every occupation be open to all without favor or discouragement to any, and employment will fall into the hands of those men and women who are found by experience to be most capable of worth, worthily exercising them. There need be no fear that women will take out all the hands of men and any occupation which men perform better than they. Each individual will uh, prove his or her capacities in the only way in which capacities can be proved by trial. The world will leave the benefits of the best faculties of all its inhabitants but to interfere beforehand by an arbitrary limit and declare that uh, whatever be the genuine talent, energy or force of mind of an individual of, or a certain uh, sex or class, those faculties shall not be exerted or shall be exerted only in some few of the many modes in which others are permitted to use theirs, is not only an injustice to the individual or determined to society which loses what it can ill spare, but is also the most effectual mode of providing that in the sex or class so fettered the qualities which are not permitted to be exercised shall not exist. We shall follow the proper, uh, very proper example of the convention in not entering into the question of the alleged differences in the physical and mental qualities between the sexes. Not because we have nothing to say, but because we have too much to discuss this point. Uh, this one point tolerably would need all the space we have to bestow on the entire subject. If those who assert that the proper sphere of women is the domestic mean by that this they have not shown themselves qualified for any other the assertion evident uh, evinces great ignorance of life and of his history women have shown fitness for the highest uh, social functions exactly in proportion as they have been admitted to them by a curious anomaly uh, though ineligible to even the lowest office of state they are in some countries admitted to the highest of all the legal and if there is any one function or which they have shown a decided vacation it is that of the reason not to go back to ancient history we look in vain for the able or former ruler that 
Elizabeth de Isabel of Castile and Maria Theresa then Catherine of Russia then Blanche mother of Louis IX of France uh, then Jane de Albert mother of Henry IV there are few kings on record who contended with more difficult circumstances or overcome them more triumphantly than these so these are the ladies who has overcome with so much of vigor and strength even in semi barbarous asia princes who have never been seen by man other than those of their own family or even spoken with them unless from behind a skirt curtain have as regent during the mo- a minority of their sons exhibited many of the most brilliant examples of just vigorous administration in the middle ages when the distance between the upper and lower rank was greater than even between women and men and the women of the privileged class however subject to tyranny from the men of the same class were at a last distance below them uh, than they any else was and often in their absence pre- represented them in their functions and authorities uh numbers of heroic kata chetty lanes like jean de montfort or the great countess of derby as late even as the time of charles i distinguished themselves not only by their political but their military capacity in the centuries immediately before and after the reformation ladies of royal houses as diplomats as governors of provinces or as the confidential advisers of the king equal the first statements of their time and the treaty of cambrai which gave peace to europe was negotiated in the conference where no other person was presented by the aunt of emperor charles the 5th and the mother of francis the 1st uh, concern the fitness then of the women for politics there can be no question but the dispute is more likely to turn upon the fitness of politics for women when the reason when the reasons alleged for excluding women from active life in all its higher departments are stripped of the garb of uh, the uh, clementry phrases and reduced to the simple expression of meaning they seem to be mainly three first these are the three reasons which are being given in the uh, support of women that they should not lead active life in politics and public first the incompatibility of active life with maternity with the cares of the household so if a woman is caring caring her family and she is on maternity she cannot take care of the uh, public and pri- uh, productive life outside home secondly it is alleged that hardening effect on the character and thirdly in expediency of making an addition to the already excessive pressure of competition in very kind of every kind of professional or lucrative employment the third one is that it could have actually excessive pressure uh, on the mind of the woman and uh, the first maternity argument is usually laid most stress upon although it need hardly be said this reason if it be one can apply only to mothers it is neither necessary nor just to make imperative on women that they shall be either mother or nothing and that if they have been uh, mothers once they shall be nothing else during the whole remainder of their lives neither woman nor man need any law to exclude them from the occupation if they have undertaken another which is incompatible with it no one proper to exclude the male sex from parliament because a man may be a soldier or a sailor in active service or a merchant whose business requires all his time and energy Nine tenth of the occupations of men exclude them a de facto from public life, as effectually as if they were excluded by law. But that is no reason for making law to exclude even the nine tenth, much less than remaining tenth. The reason for the case is the same for women as for men. There is no need to make provisions by law that a woman shall not carry on the active detail of the household or the education of children at the same time. practice of professions be elected in parliament where the incompatibility is real it will take care of itself but there is gross injustice in making the incompatibility to pretense for the exclusion of those in whose case it does not exist and these if they were free to choose would be very large proportion the maternity argument deserts its supporters in the case of the single woman a large and increasing class of the population in fact which it is not irrelevant to remark uh by tending the diminish the excessive competition of numbers is calculated to assist greatly the pra- prosperity of all there is no inherent inherent reason or necessity that all women should voluntarily choose to devote their lives 
uh, to what animal function and its consequences. Numbers of women uh, are wives and mothers only because there is no other career open to them. Number of women are wives and mothers only because there is no other career open to them. No other occupation for their feelings or their activities. Every improvement in their education and enlargement of their faculties. Everything which render them more quality for any other mode of life increase the number of those to whom it is injured and operation to be denied the choice. To say that women must be excluded from active life because maternity disqualifies them for it is in, in fact to say that every other career should be forbidden them in order to that maternity may be, may be their only source. But secondly, it is urged that to give the same freedom of occupation to women as to men would be an injurious addition to the crowd of competition by whom the avenues to almost all kinds of employment are chalked up and its remuneration depressed. This argument is to be observed does not reach the political question. It gives no excuse for withhold, withholding the women the rights of citizenship. The suffrage, the jury box, admission to the legislature and to the office, it does not touch. To bear only on industrial branch of the subject, allowing it then in an economical point of view, its full force assuming that uh, to lay open to women an employment now monopolized by man would tend like the breaking down of the other monopolies to lower the rate of remunerations for those employment. Let us consider what is the amount of its evil consequences and what the compensation for it, the worst ever asserted much worse than is all likely to be realized is that if a woman compete with man, a man and a woman could not together earn more than is now earned by the man alone. Let us make this position, uh, supposition the most unfavorable supposition possible. The point come of the two would be the same before, while the woman would be raised from uh, the position of a servant to that of the partner. And even if every woman as a matter now stand has a claim on such some men for the sport and how infinitely preferable if uh, it is that part of the income should be of the woman's earning. Even if they exaggerated somewhere put little increase uh, by it rather than she should be the compelled to stand out in order that men may be the sole earner and the sole dispenders of what is earned. Even under the present law respecting the property of women, a woman who contributes materially to the support of the family cannot be treated in the same contemptuously tyrannical manner as one who, however, she may toil as a domestic dr drudges, is a dependent on the man for subs subsistence. As for the depression of the wages by increase of competition, remedies will found for its in time. Palliatives might be applied immediately. For instance, a more rigid exclusion of children from the industrial employment during the years in which they ought to be working only to strengthen their bodies and minds for afterlife. Children are necessarily dependent and under the power of others and their labor being not for themselves but for the gain of their parents is a proper subject of legislation, uh, legislative regulation. Multi uh, with the respect for the future, we neither believe that improvident multiplications and consequent excessive uh, difficulty of gaining substance will always continue nor that division of mankind into capabilities and hired laborers and regulations of the war of uh, laborers may be a supply will be forever or even much longer rule of the world but so long competition is the general law of human life it is tyranny to shut out one half of the competitors all who have attained the age of self-government have an equal claim to be permitted to sell whatever kind of use uh, for labor they are capable for the price which it will be bring so one more point we missed actually in between and that was in the Footnote, and I guess this is very very significant for our article to read it out. Okay, an excellent passage on this part of the subject from one of the Sydney Smith's contributions to the Edinburgh Review. We will not refrain from quoting. A great deal has been said of the original difference of capacity between man and woman, as if women were more quick and more are judicious as if women were more remarkable for a delicacy of association and men for stronger power of attention all this we confess appear to us very fanciful there is a difference in the understanding of the man and woman we were 
uh, we every day meet with everybody we suppose must perceive but there is a none surely which may not be accounted for the difference of circumstances in which they have been placed with the referring to any conjectural difference of original confirm confirmation of arrive mind as long as boys and girls run about in the dirt and uh, trundle hoops together they are both precisely alike if you catch up half of these creatures and train them to a particular set of action and opinion and other half to perfectly opposite set of course their understanding will differ and one or other sort of occupation has called this or that talent into action there is surely no occasion to go into any deeper or more abstruse reasoning in order to explain so very simple phenomena so this is what if you take girls and boys separate and one i mean boys are given extraordinary chances to grow in every field and and girls are being restricted for most of the thing then they would develop their mindset in that way only and that would affect their performance as well